Well, Alma is uh, located at uh, 16,000 feet in Chile. The reason for that is that a lot of the Earth's atmosphere has a lot of water in it, and water absorbs uh, the radio waves we want to see. So in order to see them, we have to go to a, a very high altitude. Uh, the radio telescope is capable of detecting these waves. They're very short wavelengths, only a third of a millimeter long. And so you have to be able to uh, have a very accurate telescope in order to uh, detect them. You need a lot of telescopes in order to make an image of the exquisite quality that we're used to seeing from the Hubble uh, Space Telescope. So for ALMA, we have 66 telescopes, each of them about 12 meters in diameter, uh, located at the high site. Well, the important thing is how much area do you have in your telescope, right? You can put it all in one great big telescope, uh, as we have in uh, the 100 meter telescope in West Virginia, for instance. That has about the same collecting area as ALMA. But then you have to be able to support the outer ports of the telescope uh, to the uh, uh, accuracy that you need in order to look at millimeter waves. So it's much easier to make a large number of smaller telescopes, uh, which is the uh, route we've taken in ALMA. So we have the collecting area that you have with the big telescope, uh, but we have it by having a lot of small telescopes. Uh, another big advantage of having the smaller telescopes is you can move them around on the ground. And so the uh, size of the uh, image that you're going to create depends on how far apart your telescopes are, it's sort of like a zoom lens. And so by moving the antennas uh, farther apart, uh, we can get a much higher resolution view uh, of the sky. And so that's another advantage of having the uh, uh, many smaller telescopes. Well, the SKA operates at uh, uh, long wavelengths, and so uh, we operate at short wavelengths. And so the, the physics of what is doing the emitting of the radiation is important. And so for uh, ALMA, uh, what is emitting the radiation is uh, thermal material. Just your body is emitting. Your body could be seen by ALMA. You've seen the uh, millimeter wave detectors at airports, for instance. So we're detecting thermal radiation. With SKA, they're looking at uh, mostly non-thermal radiation at long wavelengths, uh, which comes from electrons spiraling around magnetic fields. So it's fundamentally different processes that are creating the uh, radiation. Furthermore, with ALMA, uh, each molecule has distinct wavelengths at which it emits. It's sort of like a radio station. You know to tune to one frequency to get your favorite radio station. Uh, it's the same way uh, with molecules. They emit at one frequency or maybe a variety of frequencies, but by tuning the frequency that you want, you're actually tuning in the molecule that you want, and so you can observe specific molecules. The molecules tend to emit at millimeter wavelengths uh, more effectively than they do at uh, centimeter wavelengths. In the 90s, basically, the ideas uh, in Europe, the emphasis tended to be on uh, observing distant galaxies and having a few very large antennas, uh, whereas some of the uh, U.S. observers wanted to have smaller antennas that were more sensitive to widespread emission uh, and having more of them. So there were different flavors of uh, instrumental desires in the different partners. Uh, and then in the uh, uh, late 90s, these all came together and we realized that there was one possibility, which became ALMA, that would satisfy all the science desires of everybody. And that by pooling our resources, not only could we afford uh, to build a bigger telescope, uh, but we could use the uh, expertise that was in uh, the different uh, uh, regions in order to uh, build the very demanding uh, technology that's, that's gone into ALMA. The receiver technology, I know Italy's been involved with that, uh, as well as uh, the uh, uh, antennas, right? The antennas were made in Italy, EIE, I think, in, uh, in Venice.